feeding the demons, however you want to take it. Amen? So everybody good? All right, that's your sermon. Let's take the Ohana fun. We're out of here. All right. I try and keep this as simple as possible. Uh, God is good. Amen? Amen. All right. I'm hoping that this, uh, this coming week I'll be on Oahu, but this will be my... I'm trying to take August off. Anyway, and as soon as I said, okay, I'm going to take August off, I get 17, 17 requests and invitations to go. You're open in August? So can we? No. Anyway, I get volleyball season starting up at St. Joe, so that's going to be um, my attempt to cure my own mental illness. So pray for me for that. Amen. I don't know. This is all interesting stuff. Okay, so, so other than that, how are you guys doing? You, you all okay? So, yeah? yeah? Oh, again, most of you. All right, good. Pastor Jeff, who else? All right, open your apps. Okay. Open your apps. Some of you, uh, uh, we do have internet in here. If you're a Time Warner cable subscriber, you do have internet in the building, so you should get it for free, uh, if, you, if you know what I mean. Amen. Almost everybody's Time Warner. Okay. And you can follow us on the Bible because there's one scripture I have up here in the NIV that you might have to flip and check it out. So, anyway, you know, good? In the Bay Area, there's not a cloud in the sky. Then when I landed, I never see the sky. I still never see the sky. But, amen. Amen. We live here. There was a lot of fear because while I was away, people were texting me, Pastor, please, please pray. There's a hurricane coming. I was reading the thing. Not even a hurricane. Anyway, I was like, <laughs> so I prayed. I said, Lord, this thing, you know, has a way of not, for some reason, that mountain is sacred. He's not going he to cross over. He's going around the mountain. Yeah? Because that big white Taj Mahal on the top keeps away all storms. <laughs> There's a lot of Hindus up there. All right. <laughs> they were all praying with their dot on the head. Okay, so, you all good? I'm just killing time so you guys get it together. Some of you are not in a laughing mood because of the weather. I don't know why you're crying for your catchment fool. Amen. Because when your catchment not full, you pray for rain. Now you get rain. Now you pray for sun schizophrenic people all right so we call this demon defeated now why do we call it that well you know that your identity will already defeat every demon amen so i'm going to just talk real stuff to you guys today because some of you like real talk and then some of you say you like real talk and then you write to me during the week pastor you're too hard on me can you stop with the real talk well i'm trying to i'm trying to get you to realize who you are how many of you are realizing who you are in christ jesus maybe it took a long process if this is your first stop on your journey then man you should be thanking god more than everybody else because man you can ask these people in the front here you have a lifetime of ministry experience um, even when you weren't a christian you had ministry experience all of you say amen because your life is ministry experience because now you look back at your previous life now, some of you crave your old life. Some of you hate your old life. But how many know that you just got to graduate from it? Amen. amen. So just say amen all the time because then you remind yourself that you're not that old person anymore. Amen. All right? Good? Yes. You know, I'm looking at a room full of billionaires. Amen. Yeah? Not, you, not even hundred heirs. Hundred heirs? Anyway, because you blew through the billionaire right here. <laughs> So now you got to get it back. So if you want to talk about success and uh, prosperity, it's being a billionaire, billionaire mentality while living on a $100 budget. But the thing is, you're working your way back up. Amen. Right. Some of you, that was, you say, oh, man, that money was so easy. Yeah, where is it? So easy. <laughs> Easily goodbye. Anyway, so change. Everybody say change. And I'm not talking about loose change. I'm talking about change. Change is a process. Amen. I mean, you're finding that out as a Christian. You're trying to change an old mindset into a new one. Here's the thing. It's not about changing your mindset. It's about realizing the mindset that was already given to you and that the enemy tried to chip away at and break down in you. All right, so what he's doing now, how many of you are experiencing this as a Christian? He's trying to break you down. He's breaking you down slowly, one thought at a time. I say this all the time that 
God speaks in periods and exclamation points. The enemy speaks in question marks. Anytime you question something, it's probably not God because God is absolute. He's resolute. He's straight up. God will tell you straight what's going on and what's not going on. The enemy always throws a question mark in there. That's how you know because he is the author of confusion. Everybody know what confusion is? Perhaps some of you are entertaining that right now. Why are you listening to me? Some of you are just born confused. Anyway, but here you are. You're born again. You're not confused anymore. So whenever you hear a question mark from the enemy, that's him trying to question your position and your identity so that you take a lesser point of view. If you take a lesser point of view, that's not the elevated view of the throne room. Everybody say amen. Come on. Some of you got to pay more attention. So you, Anyway, hallelujah. That way you're not going to ask me questions later by text. Because when you ask me questions, I know there's a demon. Anyway, okay. So. You see, when you come to church, you should have all your answers. Amen. Because I don't leave you with question marks. I leave you with. There's other churches that leave you with question marks for sure. They get you to question uh, your existence. I don't know. You and God made a deal to be here. You're here and you're questioning why you're here. Something wrong with you. Amen. All right, so many people find this process of change so difficult. Amen? However, it is necessary for reaching your destiny. I mean, you know that your destiny, very simply, is a destination. There's a place you want to be in this life. Don't choose the one you're in now. All right, this is not final success for you. This is just the latest rung in the ladder to get to the next step. All right. The next step, well, a lot of religious people like to say different level, different devil. Well, I like to say shut your mouth. Anyway. (laughs) What is the thing? Uh, STFU. Anyway, all right. uh, Let's not even go there because some people think I'm very crude. But if I'm going to talk initials like the rest of the world, then some of you understand that more because you text that every day to somebody. All right. No, it's, some of you are real quick. You understood what that meant. Yeah? You know, sometimes I've got to say to my head, STF you. Anyway, because it's trying to get me to take a lesser identical road than the one I have in Christ Jesus. So it's trying to get me to step down uh, into uh, Turkey land. Amen? Well, you know, and they say you want to soar with the eagles, you've got to stop hanging with the turkeys. So, you know, I'm looking at the sky for answers. A turkey always looking to the sky for answer. Anyway, we're not turkeys, amen? amen? All right. If you are not changing, you are not growing. How I many of you are growing? You still have to grow into your, your identity. You have to take that and you have to put it into practice every day. Remember, you still are a resident of planet Earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. There's people in your life trying to talk you down. You know, if a demonic spirit can't talk you down, he's going to use people that you trust. (laughs) So should you trust them? If you ask somebody, what do you think? How many know that you are using a demonic spirit to question your identity? Because you're trying to get somebody who's less knowledgeable and intellectual as you spiritually to get to convince you of your present position. Your present day truth is that you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus at the right hand of the Father. That is your present day reality. Um, How many know that the enemy doesn't want you to realize what you enjoy at that position? He wants you to take a lesser role. Uh, I got news for you. We are here. This is our church. This church believes in extending life. If we say that we believe that Jesus came to give life and life more abundantly, how many know that life more abundantly means extended life? Life span, life process, life prosperity. Amen. So if you want to extend life, how I many you know that you have to enjoy life, not question life, and be pissed off at life? Amen. Because all the people in your life, you chose to be there. Hallelujah. You can choose for them not to be there. Amen. But why? Oh, but they're going to talk about. I got news. They're already talking about you. Shut up already. They're already talking about you. The ones closest to you know you better than you know yourself. They hate you. 
Especially if you go to church. Church is not supposed to be a place where you, th- oh my God, where you think and become holy. It's, you're holy before you even came. Amen. Some of you have an E and you're holy. Anyway. <laughs> Everybody okay? I took five hour energy, so I'm raring to go. All right. Now, there are five demons that I've kind of identified that affect your destiny. Locating them and eliminating hindrances in your life and committing to getting rid of them will put you on the path to success. How many of you want to be on the path to success? There are many roads that you can travel from the throne room, but how many of you know that there is a path that you can sit on and let God migrate you through instead of you working your way through it? Working my way back to you, God. Anyway, you're already with God, so you don't have to work your way to God. You're there. Amen? So you just stop. Enjoy the beautiful scenery. Amen? Hallelujah. All right. The only way to change is by renewing your mind with God's Word. And you guys know Romans 12, verse 1 and 2, right? We talk about it all the time, and it's a identifiable scripture because God is not going to help you renew your mind that's left to you. Likeness is up to you. Everybody say amen. Because Genesis 126, and I've been pointing this out to some of you for years and years, and you still get your head in the ground like a turkey and an ostrich and whatever you do. All right. Everybody good? All right. So who's going to help you renew your mind? In Genesis 126, it says that... uh, God and Jesus and the Holy Ghost are having a conversation. Let us create man in our image according to our likeness. According to his likeness doesn't mean you have his likeness. It's according to. So you have the capability, if you realize your identity, identity, to enjoy the likeness if you so choose. But every day you so choose. It's not up to God to choose. It's up to you to choose. And the enemy understands this better than you do. He understands that if he can get you to enjoy a likeness that you think is like God but not quite, he wins. Hallelujah. That's all he wants to do. He, he doesn't want you to walk in the likeness of God. He wants you to think you have it and struggle along every single day so that you thwart your forward progress. He wants you to stop moving forward. He wants you to think that you are seated on the heavenly throne, but yet you don't know what you're doing. And you're letting God do everything. But that's not how it works. Because God is not living on planet earth. Amen. You are. All right. So if we read the scripture carefully. And this is Paul writing to the church in Rome. And he says this. I beseech you therefore, brethren. He's talking to church people. By the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Now, how many of you have put yourself in a reasonable place? You're presenting your body holy to the Lord. You come, you pray at home maybe, you talk to people about Jesus, you lift your hands in worship, you use your hands, you give offerings, you do all of these things. I beseech you, therefore, present your bodies a living sacrifice so you have stopped living the old way. That's a living sacrifice. That's a reasonable service. How many of you still out there partying, shooting up drugs, and sleeping with everybody? No. Why? Because you don't do that. That's not presenting your body. Amen. It's like a stripper on a pole showing everybody, oh, yeah, I'm presenting my body. It's a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable to God. So give me your money. Hallelujah. And then they bring it to church and drop it in. Hello. Amen. Or some guy down the beach with his shirt on his shoulder telling girls about Jesus. That's not a reasonable service. We don't want to see your FL abs. We don't want to see. Anyway, all right. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice. So you're doing all the things you're supposed to do. It would be like me down the beach. Oh, what's up, girl? Check out my third eye. You like that? Huh? Okay, gross, right? Even if you got a nice body and it's all eight packed instead of six, I mean, you know that. Still, that's not presenting yourself a living sacrifice. You know, people got to see the living, breathing Jesus in your life. Amen. All right. So then it says, and don't be conformed, or do not be. 
right? It's like a commandment. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you know that your body and everything, that's all one. That's all external action. But there's an internal mechanism that you've got to fix. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove. I mean, you know, this is the only way you prove to God that you have beaten the enemy down. This is the only way. There's no other way. You cannot go around and say, I'm going to cast out devils. I'm going to heal the sick. That's all external. God is not looking for that. God only wants to know you on the inside, not the outside. Because otherwise you become a Martha. He doesn't want works. Amen. Yeah, faith with corresponding actions is one thing, but you don't go out and try and evangelize the world about yourself. All right? Most of the stuff I do, I don't even say it. I just do what I got to do. Amen? I just look to the end of the day when I can put my head down. Whatever I can fill the day with, that's fine. I'm cool with that. God, bring them all. Bring the opportunities. I'll just knock them all down one at a time. Uh, How many of you, when you start your work day, you're looking at the end of the work day? That's kind of what I do because it's work. But I get to see God move and all of these things. I mean, you know that my body is, it, it has the capability to get tired. But I, I don't look at that. I understand that God is looking at my mind. He's searching my mind to see if I am transformed by it being renewed. If I say, oh, not again. You know what I get more from people than anything else? Oh, you got to go again. It's not even me. It's you. Because I will go if the opportunity is there. I just got 17 invitations for August. Hello? I cannot do 17. Some of you are getting sad already. Oh, you're not going to be again. I am here. You guys don't know, but they have me. I'm watching all of you by secret camera from my iPad. So I see who's here and who's not. And I'm like, oh, they don't like calm. Oh, good. I'm not going to pray for them tonight. You know, with technology, it's a funny thing. You get cameras everywhere. You just don't know it. I'm watching. I'm zeroing in on one face. Oh. Oh. <laughs> now all of you are like. Where is it? It's all up in the ceiling. The eye in the sky. You better watch out. Hallelujah. Well. Even if I did that, what would that benefit me? It would just make me mad that you're not here. Amen. Remember, this is your church. One day you might be called to speak up here. And then what? You might feel that burning in your belly. Like, I want to be up there one day. I want to speak. Hallelujah. And then because you sold not coming very often, then when you turn for speak, everybody going to sold not coming very often. <laughs> then who are you going to talk to? The basket? Anyway. You should be here every time the door opens. Yeah, for, oh, I'm not scolding anybody. If you work and you had something, personal engagement, I understand. It's life. Amen. You're presenting yourself. All right. That's cool. But if you always miss, something wrong with you. I know Sunday is the traditional day. Let's do something untraditional. The Lord has been talking to me about adding a service, doing Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday instead of Wednesday. So me like, oh my God, what? You should say, Amen. I want more. I would love to be in church more. Some me like, oh my God, one more time, he gonna catch us not coming. Oh, this man, I tell you, I'm gonna start a new ministry instead of Tim Wan Ministry. I'm gonna call it This Man, Oh My God Ministries. Because many of you say that in your head sometimes when I say something really crazy like, this man, oh my God. <laughs> amen. <laughs> All right, so reasonable service, amen. All right. The only way, again, to change is by renewing your mind with God's Word. God's Word is what changes your mind. Understanding the Scriptures, understanding. I'm not telling you stick your nose in the Bible and never take it out. How to see the road. Okay. Number one, everybody read that. Go ahead. Acquiring more knowledge doesn't mean your mind is being renewed. I know some real a-holes, real life, okay, that all they do is talk scripture. That doesn't mean you know the scripture. It knows, it, all it says is that you have memorized the scripture. You haven't lived it. Amen. 
I saw a guy one time, he was crying. I said, why are you crying? He said, I'm emulating Jesus. Because the shortest scripture in the Bible says, Jesus wept. That's what I mean about the a-hole. You know what I mean? Why would you do that and think that's holy? If, if I stick my finger in your eye, you're going to cry too. Does that mean that you're emulating Jesus because I stuck my finger in your eye? No. All right. So don't be that kind of Christian. Amen. You know, you guys all know I've said this before. The wisest person, according to the Bible, is the one that shuts his mouth. Nod your head. Smile. Yeah, people think you, well, you're awesome when you let them talk. It's when you talk too much, you're like, oh, shut up. Anyway, don't lie to me. You all, you all feel that way. And somebody's telling you, they, hallelujah, if they're just spouting off, you get irritated. In your head, you're like, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. I got to go, shut up, shut up, shut up. Okay, bye, see you again. Call me after, and you don't mean it. Text me. You're like, please don't. In your head, right? Hey, I got to run, but hey, call me up. Don't call me. Thank you. And then, yeah, you guys know what I mean, right? I love you in your head. You're like, I hate you. <laughs> well, I don't really hate you. I suppose that you're an idiot. I love you, but over there, please don't call me. Thank you. <laughs> call me, okay? <laughs> Biggest shocker in the world. Call me. Yeah, right. Anyway. If I tell you, text me, I mean it. If I tell you, call me, which I never do, I mean it. I never tell anybody, call me. Never. I get too many calls. So I tell you, text me. If you want an answer, text me. And people call. My ringer is off. They tell me, why you don't answer your phone? Because I never hear him ring. How come you never hear him ring? Because my ringer is off. I never tell you, call me. I say, text me. Are we all clear in here? Okay, so don't call. And expect me to answer. Unless you're just wanting to leave me a message to annoy me into going into my voicemail to have to try and listen to you. A wonderful feature that Verizon has is you can uh, have uh, voice to text. So I do that. And because you all know can talk good English, it goes, The zoo was open and my kids and this hospital room in 219. Now I still got to be irritated and open it to listen because now i got to listen to your chopped up English. Tell me, Pastor, it's an emergency. Call me. I'm in the hospital. Just text. I understand. And I know many of you cannot spell good. <laughs> Try your best. Please read the words before you press send. <laughs> I just had a lady tell me, this was what she meant. Pastor, please pray because my diaphragm is, she said it was contracting. It came out, my diarrhea is convulsing. I thought she was dying, so I called her. She said, no, my diaphragm, you know what, it makes hiccups. My diaphragm muscle was contracting, so I have constant hiccups. I'm like, oh my God, I thought you was dying of dysentery or something. <laughs> oh my God, read the words before you press send. <laughs> oh boy. I guess she thought it was all good because spell check and just rock it and roll right through and send. How many of you ever did that? You press send and then read it after, oh my God. Yeah. You can't take it back. It's like words. Once you send it, air mail cannot come back. That's it. That bird dies at the end. Okay? All right. So again, acquiring more knowledge doesn't mean your mind is being renewed. Renewing your mind is an ongoing process that takes place by applying the Word of God to your thinking so your mindset can change. Now, many of you in here, I got news. You, you feel like you're on top of it. You're going, going, going. Then all of a sudden, one thought comes and it ruins everything. Amen. I tell people this all the time. Be careful what you're looking for. You might just find it. Amen. Be careful what you're praying for because it might get answered. Just be careful with all these things. Okay. All right. The evidence, read this with me, that your mind is renewed is when you don't respond in the same way to 
all temptations. Ooh. You guys know what all temptations are? That's it. I'm going to drink tonight. <laughs> and you never drink long time. And then you go drink and then you all boss up. You listening to these guys? That's a daily temptation for some of you. Oh, you can fill in the blank. Chocolate cake. Hey, Amen. Drugs. Alcohol. People. Oh, I'm going to jump off the bridge. I'm going to... Whatever your temptation is, you need to laugh at it. You know, you got to laugh at your old temptation because the enemy thinks he knows you as you stand now, but he's speaking to an old mindset trying to get it to reactivate, so you take a lesser position. Amen. That's it. Anyway. Everybody has old temptations, so do I. Amen. My favorite hobby was lighting people on fire. I don't do that anymore. Now I light them up with the, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Just turn it around. Amen. I'm going to drink tonight. That's it. I cannot handle all this. Yeah. I'm going to get one passion orange and I'm going to drink one 12 pack right now. Go for it. You're more likely to drink 12 beers than 12 passion oranges. But you see, either one of those isn't a good option. Why would you drink 12 passion oranges? Why would you drink 12 beers? See, it don't make sense. Why would you go to excess in anything? Why not just stand your ground and migrate forward and just say, Ha, ha, ha. The enemy thinks he knows me. Because he don't know you. He's relying on an old behavior pattern to get you to slide back. Amen. If you want a true picture of who you are, there is a hook in your head attached to you at the throne. The enemy wants to pull you off of there as fast as he can. But if you say, nope, the hook is gone. Now what? What does he have? Jesus said one of the most powerful things Jesus ever said is, the enemy has searched me and found nothing. You know what he was searching? He wasn't searching Jesus' body. He wasn't searching Jesus' spirit. He was searching and relying on that Jesus was a human being on earth. He was relying on this one fact of every human that he had a mindset that maybe he could tempt and lure backward. But when Jesus said, he has searched me, found nothing. doesn't mean that Jesus was an airhead like us. It means that Jesus understands his enemy better than he understands himself amen and you got to know that you are based on your thought life that's, right. that's, right. that's all you are who you are in your thought life so clean up your thoughts and what does the enemy have he has searched you and he has found nothing not like this guy nothing no he searches you how I many you know that if you Elicit the proper, the proper response. The enemy starts to lessen his attacks on you. He starts using other people. Because he can't get to you. He has to use other people. You guys want a true picture of this? He searched Jesus, found nothing. He had to go to the religious establishment and get them to execute Jesus. Because he couldn't do it. Not realizing that as he uses these people to execute Jesus, he gets executed too. Because, how I many you know, he gets pulled in himself. That's why the three crosses are very important. Because Adam's on one side, Satan's on the other. They all get, because Adam had an activated mindset. Why? In the garden, he failed the test. He didn't ask God for forgiveness. He blamed Eve. So he got to hang there with an old mindset. How I many that gets activated? The enemy has a, re a reliability factor in mindset. So he gets yanked in. Jesus gets yanked in. Everybody's all redeemed after that. But nobody realizes they're redeemed because religious people don't like you to walk in your redemption. I hope somebody online is listening. I'm not talking to you guys. So after that, I was down the kind, Puhi Bay, and I was checking the new flags that they put up. They took them down because of the storm. So today they get blue and silver flags flying again. Okay. Amen. Why is everybody crying? I like cry too right now. Okay. Everybody good? You guys are getting what I'm saying, right? All right. You want to read number three again, just so you remind yourself? How many of you writing these things down? The evidence that your mind is renewed is when you? 
I want everybody on that have to read because I know you guys don't see good. Don't respond in the same way to everybody say old temptations. Amen. The doctors diagnose you with some kind of heart, um, pancreas, liver disorder. But right after church, I go McDonald's. Side salad, I hope. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You guys all good? Okay, don't respond in the same way to old temptations. We are to dedicate our bodies to God as a sacrifice, holy and acceptable. When we renew our minds, you guys ready? We prove what is acceptable to God. Why? Because God can now speak to your spirit man without any static, without any interference, without any hindrances in your head. God wants to... Con Somebody told me, how come I don't hear God? Because you're not listening. Anyway... And the reason you're not listening is not because you can't. It's because you have interference. You have other thoughts come in. How many ever tried to sit and say, okay, God, talk to me? And then the first thought in your head, okay, when are you going to talk? Why are you taking so long? I wonder what God sounds like. I want, oh, my God, I left the microwave on. Oh. And you're done. That's it. You're gone. That fast. Or you do one of these. God, speak to me. Mommy, mommy, mommy. Oh, my God. Then you never get back. Right? The enemy will use all manner of temptation to lure you away from the voice of God. But God doesn't speak up here. He speaks down here in your spirit. He doesn't speak in your head. Your head is filled with all kind of rubbish already. God doesn't have to talk to you up there. But the enemy likes that. He likes that landfill. He likes that landfill. He wants to pack it tight like Hilo landfill. That's why we've got to chuck the rubbish all the way across the island. If the enemy can pack your landfill, he's going to truck you all over the place. Blind as anything. Like, uh -huh, I don't know. I'll come over here with no clothes and drunk. Anyway, moving right along. Proverbs 17, 22. Let's take a look at this, all right? And uh, this is kind of the reason why I say you got to laugh at your things. You guys see this? Uh-huh. 22, a merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Hallelujah. How many know that you will literally die if you don't realize your identity? Because this is Old Testament, by the way. Broken spirit means that you, if you have a broken spirit, which technically it isn't broken, it's just underutilized, then it starts to affect your health. But you got to do something up in your head. A merry heart does good like medicine. Because how many know that you got to laugh through this life? I don't care if people don't like what I say. I don't care. Why? Because it's keeping you healthy. If you're a religious person and you have trouble laughing at my stuff, get out of here. You don't belong here. Why are you here? If you can't laugh, you're a fool. Go back to your foolish place where you came from. I'm not like them because I didn't get educated the way they got educated. People ask me all the time, where did you learn all of this stuff? Where did you learn to do deliverance? Where did you learn to preach? Uh, in my closet with the Lord. One thing about this ministry, when I first began this ministry, I tried to be like the rest. You know, the Lord said, what are you doing? I said, I, 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 um, I, um, trying to be like them. And the Lord said, I didn't create you like them. You be pleasing to me. So I believe everything I say is pleasing to God. And he laughs and God has a sense of humor. Amen. Why? Because he created you. In all your finery. In all of your elaborate looking. Oh, God. Anyway. Some of you wonder, why I got to look like this? One of two things. God made you like that, but you made yourself something else. Amen. Amen. All you got to do is download the Pokemon app and go walk around. <laughs> My kid was here last Sunday, right? You guys saw him in here if you showed up. Hallelujah. First thing he told me on the, on the way to the airport, Dad, we're going to leave early. I said, what time you got to be there? He said, <clears throat> um, 7, 7.30. I was like, your flight's at 9. He said, I know. I said, okay, this is weird because this kid is never early. Anyway. <laughs> So I start driving him down to his grandpa's house in Kyoka, and he tells me, Dad, stop a little Kalani first. You missed the view or something? It's dark. 
They know that. Just drive around slowly. <laughs> Mind you, we did that afterward too, right after church. He said, drive slow. I said, okay, driving around. And he's like, yes. We go around, he go, one more time then. Even in my young days, I never cruised Little Kalani five times. Five times. He said, you don't understand. What don't I understand? He said, this is the hottest place in the state right here. I said, is that why you came to Hilo? Just for this. So after five times, I drive him down to his grandpa's house. He gets his bags together. I said, okay, well, you're, you, you get 15 minutes to get to the airport, so I think we're good. He goes, drive past Lilo Kalani one more time. I was like, what are you doing? Is this your new church you attend that you guys have to? He said, no, Dad, you don't understand. He said, I'm on level 20. He made me drive around three more times. I was like, oh, my God. And I saw, you guys are not going to believe what I saw. I saw a new creation of people down there. I call this the glowing in the dark praying mantis. Just picture somebody with a light on their face in a, in a stance like a praying mantis. Staying real still because the lures are out. <laughs> See, I'm learning these things. You got to throw the lures out. The incense got to go out. And then the Pokemons get attracted to the incense so you don't have to move. Because if you move, you might miss them. So you got to stay, hallelujah, stationary. Or you got to drive real slow around Lilio Kalani <laughs> to mimic like you're walking. I don't know, boy. How you guys feel about this? Some of you older people better get hip to the program. Let's go. Then I read online this lady had to lecture her grandkids about Pokemons being demons and devils and told them to take off their apps because that's the devil. You are hunting devils. And those devils can jump out of your phone into you. Last time I checked, you catch the Pokemon and you own them. They're not going to possess you and make you walk around. Oh my God. Now they're walking around like this. They're not really walking around though, they're like this. Yes! I missed that one. Yes! I am missing out on something. Maybe I don't want to catch this thing, but anyway. I don't know about walking around. I don't think anybody's walking around. They're staring at a phone, ruining their eyesight, and saying yes a lot. 1,500 points. Yes. Whatever. All right. When they archive this and they're going to find them in the time machine in 300 years, they're going to wonder, what the heck are they talking about? And some wise old man said, back in that day, there was a creature called the Pokemon. <laughs> Evidently, if you have five Pikachus, you're all right. <sighs> Pikachu. All I know is get people that mama she willing to say Pikaboo <laughs> right around the corner when you come around. Pikachu? Well, lesser, maybe. All right. I don't know. I got news, guys. For years, people have been hunting Pokemons. They're all in the downtown area, lying around, waiting for the Pokemons to come. <laughs> they walk around with shopping carts full of stuff, waiting for the Pokemons to come so they can share their things. Some of you are like, I'm confused. What is he talking about? The seismologists lying around listening for earthquakes. You guys don't see them at night time. 
Even in the daytime, the Obar Sakafi is lying down listening for earthquakes. <laughs> All right, well, anyway, I'm telling you, this is a hotbed for science right here. Right here. There's seismologists, we have people creating science in their own home labs. We have people out there in agriculture growing science, waiting for the tar balls to come out. Anyway, we have, we have advancements that the rest of the world don't know about. Okay, some of you are totally lost right now. You're like, what? All right, recognizing and laughing at tempting demonic attacks ensures that you are on God's path. Or maybe you can laugh at temptation. When a tempting thought comes and tells you to walk away from greatness, what do you say? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. What do I do now? What? Just laugh because it's just something trying to move you off the mark. Remember, we say it, is, uh, we say it a lot. Energy, energy can't be dissipated. It can only be moved. So if the enemy can move you off the mark just a little bit, you miss the mark at the end. Amen? Down the path of life, you just keep driving past the highway. And you end up someplace else and you're wondering, how do I get back? And you find yourself in a bad neighborhood. <laughs> then you got to go through all this and to get back on the highway. And then you come back with your clothes all ripped up, black eye, tattoos that you don't know about, and missing teeth. <laughs> and you're wondering, what the heck happened? <laughs> this is my attempt to make you guys laugh and some of you are not getting it. Anyway, Stop drinking coffee early and then don't drink coffee at church because then you let it. The caffeine crash is hitting a lot of you. All right, do we have coffee today? No? Well, I'm going to auction off some cups of coffee for $10, starting at $10. Okay. Hallelujah. So number four, you guys are in these notes here. The word must go. Let me see, the screen went off or what? Let's go deep in your spirit. All right, deep. The word is the only thing that has the power to penetrate your heart. Hebrews 4.12. Some of you know Hebrews 4.12 by memorization. Let's explore. For the word of God is, everybody say it, living and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to Oh, boy. So let me just share this with you. Where's your soul, boys and girls? Your mindset. That's all it is. Your mind, will, and emotions are your soul. Don't say, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Why would the Lord want that evil rotten head up there in heaven? The thing that gave you the most problems on earth, you're praying the Lord to take with you when you go to heaven. You know what that would be? You'd get to heaven and say, how come you made the gates out of pearl? You know what God's answer to all of that is? Because I like. How come I got to stay by it? Because I like. Why is the sky so blue? Because I like. So I mean, not getting it no matter what. All right. Piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. So how many know that when you get into the word and understand the word, how many know that it separates your spirit from your soul? It separates the real you, the identifiable you that is seated in heavenly places away from the mindset. Amen. And of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So you know that God knows based on who you are in your seated position, who you are. I mean, you know that he doesn't want that hot mess up on your shoulders over there too. God doesn't like competition. As far as I remember, God always eliminated competition throughout the word. He always eliminated competition. In fact, he made fun of the devil. And it also says that when Jesus got into his place after the crucifixion and resurrection, he made an open show of the enemy. Amen? He made an open show of the enemy. All right. Oh, she caught a Pokemon. Okay. All righty. You guys all cool? Good. So get into the Word. Back to the notes. Amen. Almost. Okay. Hello. You guys all good? Hang on. Hang on. Okay. We'll get there. Demon defeated. How many of you are going to defeat the demons? You know how you defeat a demon? 
Anybody want to know? You know how you defeat a demon? Ignore him. You want to defeat a demon? Ignore him. You want to defeat a demon? Don't listen to what he's telling you. <laughs> Amen. You guys all know Jesus said talk to the hand, right? Okay. There are five... Maybe more, but I've identified five. Five demons we need to identify and defeat to arrive at success. The first one, you guys can all read. You guys can all see. What does it say? The demon of pride always says, I don't need to change. Anybody uh, arrive at that conclusion with people when you start talking to them about Jesus? I don't need to change. Why? I'm good. I don't need to go to church. I mean, you know that there's a reality when you take your last breath. Then we find out who's right and who's wrong. Right? Uh, people tell me that all the time. Why I got to go to church for? I said, ah, you don't have to. And they said, well, I believe that there is no God. I'm like, all right. The Bible says that uh, those that say there is no God are, are fools. Right? And they say, well, I, wanna, I choose to live my life. I don't need God. I don't need Jesus. Uh, religious people are all evil. I'm like, that's fine. And he says, well, I believe what I believe. And I always tell him, well, when we take our last breath, we all find out who's right. <laughs> and you know what they all, you should see their faces. They're like, because they forget there's a demise. There's a time limit. There's an expiration date on this body. What you going to do after? If you really want to be a true evangelist, what you going to do after? Um, uh, well, if there is a God, uh, like you said, no more God. So I always tell them, when you take your last breath, we all find out who's, who's for real, who was right, who was wrong. I said, I know one thing. I wouldn't be doing what I do if I didn't believe in what I believe. Amen. How about you? Some of you just cruising along. Well, I think it's a good idea to go to church. It's not about church. It's about relationship, not religion. You have a relationship with God. Amen. And he wants that for you. The demon of pride always says again, I don't need to change. Pride and arrogance always precede destruction and a fall. Proverbs, you guys see? You guys all there? Proverbs 16, 18. If you're writing these down. All right. Pride goes before destruction. Dun, dun, dun. And a haughty spirit before a fall. All it's saying is that pride and arrogance always will lead to destruction and a failing or a falling off. Amen. I know a lot of preachers that have a lot of pride and then they fall apart afterward. Because they build themselves up to be so huge that when, when they get caught in something, there's a huge fall, a drop off. And you know what? Because they've created a culture of consequence, some of you know that when they fall, all of a sudden everybody falls. I got news for you. If I fall, eh, cock you. <laughs> Pat the blood, rub dirt, keep going. Amen. I have come to the point in my life like, whatever. Whatever. Amen. Just keep going. All right. The next one, you guys all got the first one? What was his name? Pride. Yeah. Many of you know these people. All right. Second one is who? Fear. fear. The demon of fear always says, I'm afraid to change. Why? You love your life so much that you're afraid to change it? All I know is that when you start serving God, your life is supposed to dramatically improve. Because you finally realize the old identity you were relying on has failed you and was failing you. You didn't know there was better. So don't be afraid of change, right? Let me ask you, how many of you have had a life change since you started serving God? Yeah, well, and the rest of you, what, like, uh, I'm still waiting. Anyway, <laughs> what are you waiting for? It's like you placed your order and you never collect. How long are you going to wait? Amen. Don't settle for less when God wants to give you the best. Why would you settle for less? Why would you settle for a lesser mindset when the entertainment value in a higher realm of existence is so far better. Why would you take that? Why would you take that offer from the enemy? The opposite of love, you guys reading that, is 
fear. I'm going to help this side for a little while. The opposite of love is fear. You guys can see behind the pole. I cannot see him, Pastor. Oh, sorry. The opposite of love is fear. Why? Fear keeps you from taking risks. You guys know that? If you're a fearful person, you never take a risk. You never enjoy it. Amen? How many of you are deathly afraid of heights? Hey, Amen. We're going to practice. We're going to jump off of here. Okay, we're going to start one step at a time. <laughs> when we were kids, uh, we used to have some real daring guys that they used to go, eh, we're going to jump off Coconut Island Tower. Okay, well, that's not very high except when you stand in there towed off on the edge. And you're like, oh my God, this is high. What is that, 10 feet maybe? And you jump off, then they go to the next one. You're like, oh my God, 15 feet. Oh my God. Well, peer pressure will cause you to do stupid things, right? Eventually, I remember being drunk, standing on Kawamoto Pool's roof. And looking at my friend said, what, bro? You know more gods. I get gods. <laughs> that was the longest drop. To that point, I'd ever jumped off. Cold, hard, flat water. And you don't know how far the fall is till you jump off. When you jump off, you got to take three breaths. And then hit a wall. That's why my pants always fall on in the back. I told you guys. <laughs> that was a hard one. And then having to run from the cops after through Wong Stadium. I don't know what was worse. Looking for my lost Okole and running at the same time. And forgetting my pants at the pool and having to come back later, climb the fence again, go get my pants. <laughs> and then saying afterward, bro, that was mean. You know you're still intoxicated when you say, bro, that was me. And your friend says, one more time, and you say, what, you stupid? <laughs> and then, not even a month later, jumping off of Wainaku Bridge. You know the one with the arches? Because my friend, my other, it's a different friend, said, oh, I heard you guys didn't jump Kaomoro. That's nothing, bro. Jump off this. And then he jumps off. And he's from the bottom, he's like, what? No more... What? <laughs> Hallelujah. <sighs> <sighs> and then launching them off, trying not to hit Maui's canoe. Anyway, you know, <laughs> even though you, you know, you're on the wrong bridge. Anyway, <laughs> and jumping off and wondering where I left my other half of my okole. This one I jumped off with jeans on and ripped it right in half. The force was unreal. Ripped me right in half. And I was like, D I hope that's all it ripped. Because <laughs> I'm going to need this for the rest of my life. And then thinking, okay, I survived. When you ever come out of something and say, thank God I survived, you really made a bad decision. <laughs> Especially if you had divorce court. Anyway. <laughs> You trace back a real bad decision in your life. Amen. And then coming through that and then standing on top of Rainbow Falls and my friend telling me, what do you think, bro? Get chance. You know more gods. What? <laughs> this one was a little different because you jump in where the water goes in because you think it's going to be softer. Except you forget that you're in a toilet bowl and you're in a washing machine at the same time. <laughs> and then you're looking for your shorts float to the top. And then having to climb all the way back up. And then wondering, that's it. I have nothing left behind there. And no more. Mercy. <laughs> Hallelujah. My, you know what my friend told me right after that? Bro, now we can go akaka. You're an idiot. That's what you are. You're an idiot, bro. That's dumb right there. And he was thinking about it, huh? You know this guy? Today I see him wandering around looking for the other half of his brain. Anyway. <laughs> Perfect love casts out fear. Amen. If you're in fear. Okay, read it. All right. That's, 
And the demon of fear always says again, I'm afraid to change. Don't settle for less when God wants to give you the best. You all agree? Don't settle for less. The opposite of love is fear. Good. You guys can read. Fear keeps you from taking risks. And then if you are in fear, torment is present. All right? You guys all good with that? Torment. You notice that the back half of the word torment is meant because the meant is the mental realm. He is tormenting. He is operating in your mental realm. He's trying to affect you. All right. Perfect love casts out fear. Now let's take a look at 1 John 4. Almost. 1 John. All right. Everybody there? 1 John 4, verse 17. All right. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. Now, I mean, you know that every day is your day of judgment. <laughs> Think about it, right? Why would you live this whole life and wait for God to judge you when he says, what are you doing over there? Okay, get this picture. If God is seated, all right, let's just put me as God over here, all right? Where is God seated? In a heavenly place. All right. And then it's judgment day. What everybody subscribes to, right? They believe there's going to be a judgment day. Everybody got to present themselves. And one by one we come up and he reads the book of our life to us. Except that those that believe in Christ Jesus are already what? Seated in. You judged in Jesus. So you're seated in in Christ Jesus. So you see it with God. And then he, everybody else that didn't know God comes up one by one. And then, you, and then you show up and God goes, Hey, Lolo. What you doing over there? I'm supposed to be here. You're supposed to be over here. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm supposed to be judged. Judge me, God. Um, you are real babouge. If you don't realize that at the cross was the real judgment day. And then the crossing over for all of us. And then we seat ourselves in Jesus in heavenly places. You don't have to be judged no more. So what is the qualifying factor on whether you get judged or not? Mountain mindset. If you don't trust who God has made you to be. And you think everything's wrong. Then one day you may have to present yourself before God. But you present yourselves a living sacrifice already, holy and acceptable to God, if you already have presented your mind as being transformed. I hope you guys get this because you're not going to get up to play's house. I promise you, if another preacher that is religious listens to this message, he will pick apart everything that he thinks I said that is wrong. And he will try and present you a convincing argument that he is more right than what I'm saying. And I'm not saying anything different than what's already in the Bible. Amen. I'm not a dummy. I don't hope to be a dummy. Or what we call in Hawaii, dummy. <laughs> there are plenty of dummies out there. Amen. You know why they use crash test dummies in cars? Because the other ones never survive. You know that there were some real dummies that volunteered for that job. Okay. What again? $100 a day? Shoot. You know they started off with real people. Right? <laughs> and then, uh, okay, they're all not surviving. Let's use a dummy instead. And you still go, what? I lost my, what? You're going to lay me off. Anyway. Hallelujah. All right. You guys all here? All right. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like, why are you like Jesus? Because you are seated in every place in Christ Jesus. So you are like Jesus. Everybody say, Jesus. Because I mean, Jesus, I don't get judged. Amen. Amen. I hope you're clear with that because you're going to get some idiot out there wearing nicer clothes than me telling you that you're not like Jesus. Okay? 
Because even though the, world, the Bible said this, I didn't say this. What does it say on the day of judgment? In this world, we are like Jesus. Why? Because where are you seated? In heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. So you are like Jesus. There is no fear in love. It continues. But perfect love casts out, drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. That's telling you about religion in a nutshell. Religion tells you you got to be judged because you're not like Jesus. You didn't measure up. You, but the Bible says you are like Jesus. So there's no fear in the love who is Jesus. One of the names of Jesus is love. Got it? But perfect love, Jesus, drives out fear. So if you're a fearful person, you wonder and you listen to all the questions, how many know that you're a fearful person? Because fear has to do with punishment. So if you're outside of Jesus, you get judged and you get punished. Other, the other word is consequence. You have to be consequentially punished. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. And go back to the first, there is no fear in love. You guys all cool with that? Oh, finally. All that words for you get it, finally. All right. Perfect love casts out fear. Third one here, the demon of rebellion. You guys know who this one? Oh, when somebody told you, no, do that, and you did them, and then you had to pay after. And then you still said, nah, it was their fault. <laughs> Amen. The demon of rebellion always says, I don't want to change. I don't want to change. Why me? Why not you? I don't like change. Hallelujah. Saul disobeyed God, and his rebellion cost him his kingship anointing and destiny for samuel 15 verses 1 through 9 let's read a little bit about it so you can kind of get the picture because some of you i got news for you these five things are going to try and affect you whether you like it or not i don't care how powerful you think you are so we're reading from samuel right first samuel 15 verses 1 through 9 and then two more verses Samuel also said to Saul, the lord sent me to anoint you king over his people over israel now therefore heed the voice of the words Oh, the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I will punish Amalek for what he did to Israel, how he ambushed him on the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and attack. Everybody reading this. Go and attack Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and do not spare them. So what is God telling them? Attack them, kill them all, leave nothing alive. Is that clear? Is that clear instruction? Because the word all is in there. But kill both man and woman, infant and nursing child, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. So what's left? Maybe their bird collection. I don't know. But he said everything, right? Kill them all. So Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in Telaim and 200,000 foot soldiers and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to a city of Amalek and lay in wait in the valley. Everybody cool with this? All right. Then Saul said to the Kenites, go, depart, get down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. So they understood their calling. Let me just share this with you. The Amalekites are your thoughts. Moving right along, just so you understand. Okay? Lest I destroy you with them. For you showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. Is this cool? Cool. Good thoughts, bad thoughts, right? All right. From Havilah all the way to Shur, which is east of Egypt. He attacked them, okay? He also took Agag, king of the Amalekites, alive. Wah, wah, wah. Something's wrong. And utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep, the oxen, the fatlings, the lambs, and all that was good. And were unwilling to utterly destroy them. But everything despised and worthless, that they utterly destroyed. So what are they doing? They're saying, maybe I should keep some of my good thinking. Some of my old mindsets. Because some of these old things are still good. Because, hey, this bug are fat. I can make luau after. Huh? You guys catching this? Well, verse 22, you can go all the way down now and go check this out. All right. 
Here's where it gets interesting. So Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you've rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. So in a nutshell, we fast forward to our life in Christ Jesus now. All of these things, all it represents is old behaviors and temptations versus new behaviors. Amen? New life, new identity. You are a brand new creature in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 tells you that. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Behold, old things have passed away because you're supposed to slay that old mindset and thinking and embrace a new way of living. You know, this life as a Christian is not about how you think anymore. You're not supposed to think your way through it. You're supposed to just enjoy it. And when you don't chase the chicken, it doesn't run away from you. It comes to you. Amen? So these guys were supposed to kill everything. But they saw that some of it was good. How do you know that when you kill off all your old past, God gives you a whole brand new existence, way more than you could ever conjure up in your old way. So far above anything that you ever had. But you still want to slip back into that. Why? Because you're just like a slave. Remember, when you guys understand the Hebrew children, they came out of Egypt. They had slave mentality. They were in slavery for so many years that they came up with all this newfound freedom. They didn't know how to operate. They wanted Moses to tell them exactly how to do things, when to do it. You're not a prisoner anymore. Here's what temptation does. It tries to get you back into slavery. It wants you to get back where you can always blame somebody else for what you did. And what happened to you? But in this newfound life in Christ Jesus, you have no one to blame but yourself. And that's why you have these five demons. Everybody okay? You guys getting quiet out there? You waiting for the jokes? The joke's on you. The enemy sees to it that the joke is on you. Why? Because he wants you to blame yourself so much that you take yourself off your throne. <laughs> See the trickery now? He knows where you are. He knows what you're supposed to know. So he's going to put a question mark in everything. And the question mark always involves temptation and old mindset and behavior. Some of you have heard this message for years and you're still like, what are I going to do next? <laughs> Shut up. All right, you guys good? So Saul disobeyed God and his rebellion cost him everything. Everything. Some of you, I got news for you. If you want to go back to your old mindset, temptation, and lifestyle, you are free to go do it. But I got news for you. Now you become a target with no protections. You don't have Jesus wrapping himself around you. You choose to go back to your old way. So the enemy has full access to you now. Say amen. Because I don't like you tell me how come later. That's the how come. Bro, listen. Change. Amen? Everybody cool? I'm not scolding anybody, right? If you feel like I'm scolding you, then probably I am. But I'm not, not on purpose. On dolphin. <laughs> Some of you not getting it on this side. Not on purpose. On dolphin. Oh, boy. All right, the demon of laziness. This is another one now. It always says what? Read it. I don't feel like changing. Why? Because you believe that change involves work. No, it doesn't. Everybody make your horse sound. It doesn't involve work. All right? The enemy wants you to think that it involves a lot of work to change, but all it involves is you keeping your mouth shut and your mind clear. Amen. Is that hard work for you? Why? Because your mouth no more filter. <laughs> Come through your brain, straight out your mouth. And then you're like, oh, my God, I didn't mean to say that. Shut up. You did. 
That's why you said it. So read it again. The demon of laziness always says, I don't feel like changing. Oh, boy. Making excuses. Laziness will lead you to poverty. So how many of you have found out the trick and the secret to great prosperity is through what you throw in this basket and the way you think and the way you operate? Some people have found an even greater secret. They put money in my pocket or in my hand. And I'm like, well, I'm like, you sure? And they're like, yes. And they, f- man, as soon as they do it, within seconds, things change. I'm not asking for your money. I'm asking for all your money. <laughs> as long as we clear. Okay. <laughs> no, it does work. Some of you have found that we, sometimes they take an offering from the ministry that I enjoy, right? I go out and I do things on your behalf. So some people find that through the offering. That's great. Some people say, pass out this just for you. And they're like, oh, my God, you know, as soon as I do that, oh, my God, I get all that. that, that. Okay, great. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, believe me, I do that. For others, that's why it's done for me. So don't feel slighted if you're not doing it. I'm not telling you to do it. Some of you have embraced this with Cheetos and Munch Bars. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. But I cannot take on bag Cheetos in the mainland and say, oh, I can trade this in for one cheeseburger. <laughs> I cannot go to another church and sow because what happens is you sow, I sow. So I cannot go into their offering and go, Because I do that and it just explodes into more Cheetos. I just I live in Cheeto land. Oh my God. I'm in heaven, but not really. Because if my clothes wear out, I cannot wear Cheeto bags. Because the Cheeto might land in the wrong spot. The picture, I mean. All right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Proverbs 6, verse 9 through 11. Here we are. How long will you slumber, O sluggard? When will you rise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall your poverty come on you like a prowler and your need like an armed man. This is laziness in a nutshell. And it's telling you that you're just lazy with your spirit- spirituality. You just don't understand what you have. So therefore, you're like, ah. God, whatever you like. Yeah, God said, yeah, I gave it all to you. Like, okay, God, whatever, whenever you're ready. And he's like, you're sitting on the keys to the bank vault. Okay, whenever you like, pull them out of my ocala and put them in my hand, that's fine. You know how dumb that would be? You're standing on a mountain of money and you tell, okay, Lord, whenever you want to give it to me, just rain, let it, make it rain. And he's standing on the mountain that has already rained of money. And you're standing on it. And he's saying, look down. I don't want to look down. The devil is there. That's hell. I don't want to look down. You see, everybody has a built-in excuse for something. Amen? What is your greatest excuse? It's probably, I'm tired. Hello, demon of whatever. You know, okay, you know what I mean? I don't like go. Oh, demon of rebellion. Oh, I don't like, you know, all church people are going to be there. Oh, yeah, okay, what else? Yeah, keep going. Oh, boy. You guys reading this? Laziness will lead you to poverty. Don't expect success if you're too lazy to study and apply the Word of God. Simple as that. How do you study the Word of God? Well, we're doing it right now, unless you're sleeping. Anytime you want to study the Word of God, just go on Spreaker, on iHeartRadio, look me up and start listening. You know, the greatest study you'll ever do is listening. Right? Because most of you don't like reading. That's why you're here. Because I read for you. That's why when I say, okay, read this with me, only four people reading out loud. The rest of you are like, feed me, preacher boy. Just read it to me. Bruh, read. <laughs> Good night. You're driving the mainland on the freeways. You know how fast the exits come up and you got to take them? And you're three lanes over and you're like, oh, great. And then you go, what, 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 what? (laughs) You can't do that because they all want to kill you with their car. (laughs) 
you got to read the signs in life. How I many you know that there are signs in your life right now without words? It's just scenarios that play out, and you just got to read those things and say, yeah, I think not already. I think I'm done with that. It's up to you. Okay, whatever. Uh, don't expect success if you're too lazy, okay? The fifth one. Dun, dun, dun. The demon of ignoramus. The demon of ignorance always says, I'm good. I don't need to change. I'm good. It's all good. My life is all good. And then when they get sick in the hospital, and then they're like, hey, what was that person's name? To call him up. People do that all the time. You know, these things that go on in this ministry that are really basic, right? How many of you have been changed and transformed? Man, have you ever experienced a miracle in your life? Yeah. What's a miracle? Something that changed the whole way you were. That's a miracle. Amen? So some of you, maybe, maybe you never owned a house. Boom, now you have a house. And you're like, oh yeah, I wouldn't qualify. I, my hard work, my good credit, that's what got me my house. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you know that God has to make that opportunity a reality for you? All right. Maybe that house wasn't going to be there, but God made a way for the house to be there. Amen. Maybe the car wasn't going to be there, but God made a way for the car to arrive. God will use all manner of men, it says. God will use people to bless you. God has used me a lot of times to bless people. And people have walked away. They took advantage of that, grabbed the thing, and left. How I many you know that whatever it was in mind to begin with? It was just passing through my hands. Do you know that everything in your life is just passing through your hands? It's always meant eventually for somebody else because let me tell you, nobody lives forever. When you in the coffin like this, okay, to look at this. You don't can start your car. You cannot open your house. <laughs> you cannot even change your clothes. You gotta rely on somebody's good taste. You better hope you have a lot of people with good taste. So they're going to dig deep in your closet where the ones you never used for years. Like, oh, look at this. This would look nice. Can you imagine in spirit form, you're looking at your dead carcass in a box like, oh, my God. I hate them. And somebody, ladies, got to do your makeup. I saw a lady one time. I had known this lady for at least 30 years, right? She passes away. In all those 30 years, guys, I never saw this lady wear makeup. She was in the box. And I said, oh, the circus came to town. I had to walk to the front of Doro, look at the sign. Go back. And then I heard somebody whisper, oh, he blessing her a second time now. <laughs> I wasn't blessing her for a second time. I was just making sure. <laughs> this lady had a gray, silver ponytail her whole life. In the coffin, she had one wig. <laughs> and you know what one of the daughters said? This was her favorite wig in the 70s. Why would you put it on her head? Real kind. I'm not even lying. I'm not lying. Okay, just, just understand. And as I'm there, everybody is sitting down because I'm the one that's going to do the eulogy thing. I'm looking at her and a cockroach come out. I'm like, oh my God. And it comes out of that old wig and in her ear. And as I'm standing there, you guys all know you go to the ear, nose, throat doctor, right? Goes in, comes out her nose. And then I bend down and go, flick. And I'm hoping nobody sees. <laughs> this is the cockroach from hell. It wasn't the big kind. It was a smaller one. It was like, and as I'm reading my notes in the funeral, this thing comes walking across my page. And I go, and that's say it, the Lord. <laughs> 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 
you can't make these stories up. I'm telling you, it's just, I'm like, this is, this is the, the funeral from hell. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. These people, who would dress her up with bright pink? Oh, my God. She had foundation. What was it? You know when you wrinkle? No going to crack. I was like, and you know what kind of thoughts come to my mind? Because I'm kind of, I'm thinking, the week before I had been driving in a place where there was a lot of desert. So there's a lot of rock outcropping. And I was like, my mind went to that. I was like, <laughs> her neck looked like the canyons I just drove to last week. Anyway, I got to shake it off now. Like, oh my God, I'm losing focus here. So I got news for you. If any of you kick the proverbial bucket, I'm going to inspect your body before the funeral. And I'm going to be with the handkerchief. That's not them. Erase. That's not them. Any of you ladies get makeup remover uh, wipes in here? Come on. Get up here. Let's go. Let's work this. I'm going to make you all hammer jang like you are now. <laughs> I'm going to make sure because that was burned into my memory banks forever every time I see it. and the lipstick was crooked you know oh, you cannot be color in the line and then out the line then back in the line then out the line you cannot do that this person cannot help themselves they cannot go huh. oh, no. you got to rely on somebody with good taste <laughs> amen all right and right before they close the casket one of the daughters evil wench I'm telling you Said, this, this lady was too much. She was the black sheep daughter. They come to the funeral only for the half donuts. I'm telling you. She came over there, started pulling the, her mother's jewelry off her hands. She don't need this where she's going. Oh, wow. oh my God. I thought I was going to get troll blows kind. God made whole donuts. He never said cut them in half. <laughs> If and when I do go, I hope I'm there. I'm, I pray that I'm the last guy. Put you all in a hole before me. But if not, if you cut that bloody donuts, I will haunt you. You guys hear me? I will haunt you. You will see half donuts in your room when you wake up at night. I promise you. You will wake up to brush your teeth. going to have a half donut right in front of you. I will torment you to the end of time. Do not cut the donuts. Who does that? Not even a fat lady will cut them in half and say, I'm going to eat half now and half later. There's no way. Do not cut the donuts. And don't you dare cut the tuna sandwich in four. I will kill you. I will stuff this tuna in your bibbities and your panties when you're sleeping. I will... I will torment you for eternity until you join me. And I will say, I never was it me. <laughs> that is one of my pet peeves when you go there and there's half donuts. I'm like, who created this evil thought process? You know why? Because nobody going to eat two and say I ate one. They're going to eat three, five, seven, and nine. And you're going to end up being, you're going to be the last one to the box and get half. You're going to be the one with the one quarter of a tuna sandwich and it's the butt end of the bread. Because nobody like eat that pot. They're going to leave them just for you. The two butt ends turn inside out to fool you. If you do that, you trying to trick somebody? Come on, we're not stupid. We was born daytime, not yesterday time. You know what I mean? You guys all good at that? My rant for funerals. I cannot stand that. I went to a funeral. They cut the sushi, the maki sushi. Then they cut them in half. I was like, who is these people? They went beyond. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's hot enough to cut the maki one way. You go check, cut them the other way. It's all peeling off already. Look like bad scotch tape. It's no good already. Okay, we're all good? Take a deep breath. Okay, man. 
we got you. Don't cut our donuts in half. Yes, do not cut my donuts because I know that's my money paid for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many of you have a favorite way you dress? Huh? Yeah? Yeah. And then somebody going to change the whole way you look in a coffin. You wear tank tops because you sweat into menopause for the last 40 years of your life. And then somebody going to put you in a hot dress for eternity with a coat on. <laughs> Your body going to be sweated in the box. I know you ladies. Some of you ladies can go on the top of Monarchia and go, oh my God, this is perfect. Come on, ladies, who's going through it right now? Raise your hand. Come on, come on. Yeah, clean the chair when you get up, huh? Don't leave your essence back. Or should I say essence? Don't leave your essence back, okay? Oh, uh, boy. All right, ignorance is not an excuse for not changing. All right, the Word of God is accessible in so many formats. Everyone can get the information they need to change. Are you getting the information you need to change? All right. Is there any more on here? Are we done? I think we're done. All right, let me check. Make sure. All right, ignorance. That's it. All right. You guys all cool with that?